On um, on the tooth and nail deck. Oh boy. We've got uh, what looks like Smiley. Yep. Is back over. Was he there. playing the zoo deck? Uh, he is playing the zoo deck. Oh, we have a. Uh, we have Ben Riley over there. Nice. Oh. About time, man. Yeah, it's about time we saw we saw one of our one of our guys. Now there are good players. There are local grinders. There are this. There are that. But the TJ's Titanium grinders, those are the players that we love because they come to every challenge and we reward them. Like they patronize. Uh, Patron. Pa- they are our patrons. They are our patrons. Yes. Uh, and we in turn give them coverage. Deck techs, feature matches. So if you want this for yourself, come to our tournaments. Introduce yourself to the coverage team. We'll get you deck techs. We'll and, get you interviews. And do well. That well, that, that helps. Yeah. I mean, that kind of goes without saying, right? We're not going to put the O2s on camera. Yeah. As much as I want, I want Walgreens on camera. I love, I love the guy. He o 3 I can't. I can't do it. Can't do it, man. Can't do it. It's too bad. So we're going to find out for you soon which of the two matches is our feature, but the very fact that they're over there and not some X2s means that people are not drawing this round. Okay. That, that must be what that means. because So at the beginning of this round, there were something like 18 players still in contention. Hmm. After this round, there are going to be like 11 or 12 players in contention. So I'm guessing we're going to see one or so two need, tables need, drawing. Need, uh, yeah, I think like we'll see probably the top table draw if, um, if uh, Richardson won. Yeah. Then they're they're just gonna he's just just gonna draw with the winner of uh, Sam Lawrence. Okay. Oh, here we go. So Jeff's got us uh, updated standings, and it looks right. like we're doing table five. So whoa, this is gonna be very interesting. I love it. We've got Thomas Smiley on his uh, Jund Jund Agro Zoo deck yep. versus Matt Tupper on love it tooth. And now, love it. This, there uh, we go. So, so two players we've already seen, right? And this is not something that I generally like to do with my coverage because I like to pick new players. But, but these though, players keep winning. This is exactly what I want. I want to see because this is this is high stakes. These are people we know. <laughs> the, these are people we we've we have a story with, and now they're playing off to see who makes top eight. Love it. Only one can enter. <laughs> it's the two two men enter, one men leave. I love it. I love it. So, your boy Tupper. Uh, he is five one and one, so he is not five one. He's five one and one. He absolutely has so to win. So he has to win to get it. No chance with a loss. Yeah. Tom Smiley, on the other hand, very slight chance with a loss. Probably not, mm-hmm. but the stakes are a little lower for him. He'll at least top sixteen with a loss. Yeah. Tupper has to win. Um, on the other side of the table, or uh, not on the other side of the table. Uh, otherwise, at the top tables, Sam Richardson won. He's seven and zero. Oh. He's playing against Sam Lawrence. They'll draw for sure. Brandon Smith, haven't seen him yet, don't know what he's playing. He's going to draw with Keenan Kelly, who is 6-1. He can draw. Keenan Kelly's on blue-white control. Uh, so that is at least two blue-white control decks in the top eight. So we have Anthony Orfello versus uh, Ben in our other uh, yeah. other matchup. Yeah. So, it, so, so it is either a, I'm going to counter your stuff, or I'm going to combo you in turn two. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I don't think uh, this match of ours is going to last long enough to see the backup, but we'll see. Yeah. Also in contention, don't know what they're playing. Matt Borst, haven't seen him yet. Uh, and yeah, Matt Borst, Brandon Smith. Those are the two players we haven't seen yet. Mm-hmm. We'll get you deck list when we have them. So we're about to cut to the match. Stay tuned after this match because we're going to announce our top eight, maybe do a player interview. We'll see how much time we have. Um, as well as crack a nice dissension pack on screen on stream for you. Get you mm-hmm. a foil. I'm thinking foil breeding pool. You think foil breeding pool? Yeah, I think so. What are what other shotguns were in that? Uh, there was Hollowed Fountain, Breeding Pool, and Blood Crypt. We're going to get Blood Crypt. <laughs> if it's a Blood I'm going to be so mad. We're going to get a non foil Blood Crypt. <laughs> I'd take that, I guess. Yeah, I'd fine. take that. So, in case you weren't watching us in round two or three, I wouldn't blame you if you weren't, um, Tom Smiley is on a, a Jund Zoo deck. Well, kind of like a five color Zoo deck. Yeah. Uh, if you were playing Modern at the very beginning, you remember the Tribal Flames Wild Nakatal Zoo decks? Like, this is like before Nakata got banned, I think. I believe so, yeah. Um, maybe I'm thinking of Extend, but either way, it plays Tribal Flames and Might of Alara to have Domain, have all, all five basic land types, pump up its creatures plus five plus five for one green mana, or five damage to a target for two mana. Uh, really, like, hyper efficient cards. Oh, yeah. Incredibly efficient, like unreasonably efficient for yeah. their mana cost. Yeah. Now the downside is it's playing a bunch of one drops. Uh, you know, pretty vulnerable. Chalice of the Void, Engineered Explosives, even like Path Snap Path. It's really good against this yeah. deck. 
Now, what Tupper, I think Tupper main board, his matchup is actually not very good unless he's able to go ramp, 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 Hornet Queen. Uh, if, 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 or ramp, 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 like, cast my, uh, my tooth and nail entwined and kill you. Okay. Um, post board, though, he's going to have a much better Yeah, better time. yeah. He's got Lightning Bolts, he's got Scabbing News, he's got Thragcus, he's got Opsin and Bailoth, he's got Worm Coil Engine, he's got plenty of things to do post board. Um, but game one, this is going to be rough. Yeah. Now, if you guys weren't watching in round four, this deck is effectively a ramp deck that is trying to ramp into either tooth and nail, Primeval Titan, Primal Command. It's a ramp deck, but its end game ultimately is tooth and nail into Xenagos Emrakul for a kill. So it's going to be a race against time. The Zoo deck will have to win before Tupper gets to enough mana. And just a slight correction, we'll get it fixed for you soon. Matt Tupper is 5-1-1, one, and one, not 5-2. Um, Un unknown if Tupper's draw was intentional or unintentional. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Tupper usually plays reasonably efficiently, so maybe he he got um, convinced to take an intentional draw somewhere. Mm. So Tom starts out Street Wraith, Street Wraith, Bloodstain, probably be dropping himself to 13. Mm. He didn't play a one drop though. Very interesting. Yeah, it's pretty unlucky. He has a lot of them. Four Swift Spear, four Goblin Guide, yeah. four Nakata, four yeah, Death he, Shadow. He kept the hand because it, it, it looked. Uh, at, he looked at two Street Wraith and he's like, "What's the chance of me not drawing a one drop off of this?" Uh, apparently, the hundred percent. Yeah, as it turns <laughs> out. <laughs> Tupper with a land. Looks like he's gonna he's gonna find a one drop here, a Utopia Sprawl. Tupper with a uh, Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger in hand. Nice. It's one of, one of my favorite cards that's been printed recently. It's so, what an Eldrazi really should be. Oh, yeah. Inspire terror when it comes down. So Tupper on a mulligan to five, though. Uh, it's something to note. Ah. This game is going to be a very uphill battle for him. Unless, yeah. unless Smiley uh, draws just straight no threats. It's amazing to me that Matt Tupper has won five matches with this deck. And, like, I'm not <laughs> trying to knock the deck, but, like, we're looking at these opening hands, and it's, like, one land, one Utopia Sprawl, and a ten drop. Like, <laughs> how do you win these games, Tupper? Oh, my God. He's very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we missed this end of turn lightning bolt myself. Ooh, yes, so he can get this Death Shadow yeah. to play. Yeah, Breeding Pool untapped. I think he's at 8 life now, and Death Shadow is a 5-5. Five five. So turn 2, 5-5. Five five. Not bad. 5-5 yeah, five five for good. 1. With, maybe with Might of Alara back up. Forest go. Forest go. <laughs> Sick, bro. Strong. <laughs> Who drew Emacrol. <laughs> <laughs> Cycle Street, right? Down to Cycle 6. Down. Wow, this huge Death Shadow. Yeah, 7-7 seven, seven attacking on turn 3, pretty good. Look at, like, look at this hand, he's won 5 matches! <laughs> this is this is like a, a cube draft gone wrong, what is this? <laughs> tribal Flame, uh, Thomas Smiley Tribal Frames myself? Is that a thing you can do? Ah! Uh, <laughs> he's got him to 1! That's dangerous! <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty sick though. Who it? needs life totals? Yeah, right. You haven't he, lost until you're at zero. He's thinking about doing it. That's the crazy part. Oh he's thinking God. about it. He's thinking about it. It actually takes a turn off the clock. It's probably the right play. The only thing he's thinking about right now, it has to be like lightning bolt. Like, God, if this if this guy just lightning bolts me, I'm going to feel like such an idiot. That's what he's <laughs> thinking. I mean, your opponent mulled to five. He's done nothing. Why take the risk of putting yourself to one, right? Uh, with great risk comes great reward. There we go. It'd be so tempting that's for a, that's me to do That's a flavor text somewhere, right? I'm sure. It, I'm sure it is. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. One mana. Yep. Bolt myself. Bolt myself. <laughs> okay, he's he's taking a conservative route, putting himself to three, which still dies to a bolt, but you know. This is just as Richard Garfield drew it up. Yeah. This is. How magic was always meant to be. Yeah, played. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. No, he's like, <laughs> scoops, that, like, mm. that opening is too strong. <laughs> I can't deal with you bolting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it. It's just like 
we see these matchups where they're like, street raid, street raid, fetch, shock, tar fire myself. And the other person's like, no, 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 stubborn denial, counter it. You <laughs> can't have that happening. <laughs> I don't get modern sometimes. Sometimes it's real weird. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. All right, so Tupper bringing in all, uh, bringing all the life gain, bringing in the the bonfires. Oh gosh, I didn't, I didn't even see the bonfires in the first pass through this. Oh, so good. Bonfire yeah. up the top. How can you bonfire a twelve twelve for one? Can't, I mean, you can't bonfire the uh, the death shadow, but you can bonfire everything else. Oh, you and everything also else. them, right? Yeah. If he had gotten himself to two life and said go, and these guys are just like, <laughs> he's just like bonfire. <laughs> it's like the Kibler moment where his bonus <laughs> yeah. went goes whoop, bonfire like hands up. <laughs> Oh my god, except Tom Smiley brought it upon himself. <laughs> <laughs> so players of Cyber, like you said, he has two Bonfire, he has two Obstinate Balath, a Chameleon Colossus, a Thrag Tusk, an Ooze, some Bolts. He has a lot of game. Like you said, I, th I think you're right when you say uh, he gets a lot better after board. Yeah, he has a lot, lot more ways to interact with what Tom's actually doing. Yeah, he gets to shave like Emrakul, Xenagos, Ulamog, Tooth and Nail if he wants to. Yeah. I'm not sure how Tupper's been boarding against decks like this. Looks like he's going four for four. Okay. So That's that it. probably Only means four. Uh, interesting. So so maybe he's just bringing the. He's not bringing in Bonfire? That'd be kind of strange. Hmm. I feel like he should be boarding in more than that. Well, at the same time, we know. We know what Tom's playing. We know that Tom has Nakato, Goblin Guide, Swift oh, Spear. Oh, Tom, Matt hasn't seen any of the low-to-the-ground creatures. Right, I just realized that myself. So yeah. All he, he's seen is Death Shadows. Yeah, he thinks it's the version with, like, he's, only Goyf. He and, thinks it's Jun Death Shadows. Yeah, yeah. And Traverse and things like that. So I guess I like how he's boarding then. I still find more than four cards, though. Yeah. <laughs> Scavenging News, Lightning Bolt, Worm Coil, Battle of Colossus, Drag Tusk, yeah. Relic. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I, I guess he, he probably brought in... Uh, Thrag Tusk, Baloth, Worm Crawl Engine. Four cards. Yeah, the life gain cards. Yeah, the cards that gain life uh, immediately. Sense. The Scavenging Ooze seem reasonably low impact versus the others. Yeah, a 2-2. Two -two, I mean... Yeah. If, if he if he wins this game and sees Goblin Guide's Twist Spears, though, he's going to uh, he's gonna bring in the, the Ooze, the Lightning Bolts, and the Bonfires. Yeah, you gotta hope he goes back to the board. But first yeah. he has to win a game, which I think will be an uphill battle. These, like, big mana decks always have such a tough time versus Death Shadow. Mm-hmm. Um, on the so, having, others, having yeah. to play is a big deal, though. Yeah, it, true. It, for, especially for him, for how how fast he can he can ramp and how much he can create by turn three. If he can if he can create a huge amount of mana by turn three and do something ridiculous like Primal Command mm. or Game, awesome, yeah. or, or Thrag Tusk, like then he puts himself in a great position to continue his game plan on to the end. Now the reason we're not talking about Thomas Smiley's. Sideboard is because almost nothing is impactful here. We have three Thalia, Guardian of Throbin. That's that's it. And yeah, it's, that it's, barely does it's not either. Yeah, it's not even, we're not even sure if that's good. I guess you'd side in the it's Rise Fall enough. to make him discard two cards. Yeah. It's good enough that it slows down things like Utopia Sprawl and uh, Garuk. Right. And the Tooth and Nail itself. Three, four, five, six, seven. Though... He has seen nothing out of Tupper, though. Yeah, he, he, he's he's seen um, he's seen a few lands. Yeah, Utopia Sprawl and Forest. Yeah, the well, Utopia Sprawl should give him a uh, a reasonable. Yeah, uh, yeah, like that's like, enough. Yeah, that's that's enough though. So okay, so just turn one. Oh, bro. Yeah, if if I were Tom Smiley, I would think my opponent's trying to accelerate into one really Acid Moss and like Inferno Titan. Yeah, that's yeah, th that's that is something to consider. Stopper has not shown him anything. And we have a uh, Street Wraith. It's also something interesting. I saw someone uh, suggest the banning of Street Wraith. Yeah. If, if anything is going to get banned in Modern, I, it's probably that. Yeah. I, I kind of understand that. It's It slows down Death Shadow. Just enough. I think it'd probably kill the deck, to be honest. Really? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's still really good. All right, so he has a Utopia Sprawl here, so he can start going going nuts. I think he can actually, ooh, he, can, he can get pretty pretty high up there pretty fast. Yeah, this is a turn four tooth and nail hand. Look at this. Yeah, so he goes Utopia Sprawl on my forest. Yep. Untap my forest. I like it so far. Tap this, make a two, three mana. Oh, that's an overgrowth. An overgrowth on the same forest. Nice. Ooh. So that's a scary forest. Okay, so that's, that's um, right now, that is uh, four 
eight, nine mana. This is that exactly is, what we're talking is, about. It's Tooth and Nail. This is turn he, three yeah, if, if he cannot answer this, uh, if he does not answer this Auber Elf Healer here, he dies to Tooth and Nail. Wow. If I were Tom, I'd probably try and kill that Arbor Elf. Yeah. I mean, maybe he doesn't Maybe he doesn't know. Maybe he's just like, hmm, whatever. Yeah, maybe he doesn't have any big mana cards. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? 30. Yeah. <laughs> maybe he's just trying to play like a 6-6. Six, six. 30. Primeval Titan, I can deal with that. Yeah, the funny part is maybe he can. But he can't deal with a 30-30 Emrakul. Yep, that has protection from everything. The actual word everything is on it. <laughs> Oh no, sorry, the word everything has on it. Yeah, you're thinking of um yeah, progenitus. Thinking of progenitus. The the word uh instance. Is that real? Almost always everything. Teague. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh shattered. Oh, that's so brutal. Oh that's so brutal. Oh my god, poor Matt Tupper. He tried so he hard. Has, he, he has something else. Oh man, with the one of Gaddock Teague. Maybe he just draws like bolt. All right, so he can at least deploy Arbor Elf. That is literally the least he can do. Maybe double block the Teague. <laughs> so he's a land. He has an Arbor Elf. And then he cast, can't cast any other spells. Right, right. <laughs> uh, tap for four green mana. Um, Arbor Elf. Pass. <laughs> oh, I feel so Daggers. bad for Matt Chopper right now. <laughs> oh, that was going to be so good. Oh, the one card in this deck outside of a removal spell in the Arbor Elf yeah. would have stopped it. Even the Thalia, he could have made 10. 10's fine. Yeah, he can deal with that. Come but on. this is this is good, though, because this is showing Tupper what's... Oh, wait, no, it wouldn't matter if he loses anyway. I was going to say, it shows Tupper what's in the deck, right, but this is not right. just a 5. Yeah, if, <laughs> if he can pull, like, a, a Lightning Axe, a Bolt, a Bonfire... Can you imagine a Bonfire right now? Can't be cast. Oh, God, you're right. Oh, no, 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 he could Bonfire for 2. He can bonfire X, for two. X, right? You, be, uh, you can't yeah. cast X spells at all. Oh, you can't cast X spells at all with under... under. Oh, no. Yeah, really. Actually, Matt Tupper's drawing really thin right now. And we only saw him sideboarding five cards, or four cards. He might not even board it in bolt. He might just be drawing dead. You're right, yeah. Unless he draws, like, a natural... Okay, so what is it? Emerald? He has four, eight, twelve... Okay, not twelve anymore. <laughs> Can he still cast Emperor? So he's 8, 9, 10, 11. There he is. What's the pull? The wooded Foothills. Oh, no. This is <gasps> this is crushing. Oh, man. The one of Gaddock T proving huge right here. End of Boros turn. Boros Charm you. There it is. Oh. There's the scoop. Tupper with the handshake. And Thomas Smiley. Is on to top eight. Wow. Yeah. Now Tupper taking it in stride though. Look at him. Yeah. He's not slamming any tables. He's not he's not kicking any decks. He's not throwing cards across the room. No. He's just he's like, yep, that happened. He's being a good sport right now. I like it. Tom Smiley locks up top eight in pretty convincing fashion, to be yeah. honest. That, that was straight easy for him. It would it would have wouldn't have been if it wasn't for that turn two, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh hey everybody. If you're just joining us after that letdown, that uh. crazy letdown, uh we're in the last round of our Titanium Plus event here in Worcester. Um it's very anticlimactic. It really was, it really <laughs> was. I was like, turn four, two, turn four. Teague. Teague. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I think we uh, I think we have a good deck in top eight though in the form yeah. of Tom Smiley. Yeah, this deck is 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 very powerful. Uh, Tom made a great meta choice by picking this deck. Yeah, um, it's definitely like it, it is the best new variant of Death Shadow I've seen so far. I like it. I mean, tr Tribal Flame is a hell of a magic card. Two mana, five damage. Yeah, or one green mana, pump for five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and another plus as well uh, is that we have a backup match for you. And as soon as humanly possible, we're going to get to that. Uh, we're checking on the game state. We don't want to bump in under like a judge call or a player going to the bathroom, something like that. We're going to make sure it's okay to transfer over there. And as soon as we do, um, we're going to get that. Um, stay tuned right now because we're going to get you that other match. Like I said, we also have booster pack cracking and top eight announcement after this. Oh, yeah. You know it.
the things that we know that are in top eight, uh, two blue-white control, this zoo deck, and a Felidar Guardian combo deck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember that one? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No, I remember. Wow, that's pretty cool. That, this is quite a cool top eight. That's I, the thing I've been really liking about these TJ events is just every top eight has been so unique. Yeah. It's, it, it hasn't been just this generic, hey, look, there's three affinity lists, a burn list, a, a taxes list, and, like, one reasonably cool deck, and then everything else is, like, eh. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? Because, like, in a tournament that's only eight rounds... Certain decks can slip through that maybe when I mean look at look at Matt Tupper he almost just top aided the deck or rather I'm sorry top aided top aided the tournament yeah he almost top aided with tooth and nail <laughs> yeah yeah but a 15 round tournament he would not have come close because variants would have gotten him eventually like yeah. he would have eventually just mulled the five a bunch because that's what his deck does and like draw the emerald but stuff. now he's 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 five uh, five one two. Probably, yeah, yeah. I think he. I think that unfortunately misses him for top thirty-two, though. Oh, he he, he might get some money out he of might, this. He might he, he might he might slip in. I money. hope I, I bet he does. He slips in. I bet he does. Um, well, either way, it's a pretty good showing for what's clearly just a pet deck. Yeah, I mean that's that's not a known deck. Yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. It's a it's a deck that's it's it's known, but it's not like known. Known by you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's true. I'll I'll, I'll give you that. one. It's cool, though. I mean, like you said, we get to see these decks that are just off the beaten path. And since these events are every month or multiple times a month, like higher stakes events, you can actually test your metal in these in these events and like not feel pressured because it's not the only Grand Prix you can go to all year. Yeah. You go to one of these every month. You can go to a challenge every single month and try and win the qualification. Like tune your tune your deck week to week. Now here you go. You look at those. Right, let's see what we got. So we have. We have good old Cheerios. Oh, uh, yeah. By uh, Benjamin Riley. Benjamin. Versus Anthony. We saw Anthony earlier with the blue-white control. Did a quick interview when he was victorious. Um, Interesting to note, both of these players list their dad as their deck designer. Well, I want, uh, some a collusion there. How weird <laughs> is that? <laughs> the, the, the dad brew club. You know, I don't have the data on me, but I'm reasonably sure their dads don't play Magic. You think? You think we're being rused? I, <laughs> familiar's ruse. So we, these these guys have to be post sideboard. So Anthony definitely knows that Ben is trying to cast a bunch of bone saws and go through his whole deck in grape shot. So as a result, he'll have boarded in, uh, negate and dispel, mm. maybe, uh, maybe yeah. definitely dispel for the paradoxical. Yeah, and for uh, is retract an instant? Retract an instant. instant. Yes, yep, you're right. So that that's the combo there. You can't win without either of those cards. Yeah. So. Now it's funny. This deck is full of artifacts with activated abilities, but Stony Silence will probably not be uh, boarded in. No. As goofy as that uh, is. Actually, no. So Stony Silence actually shuts down the early version of the combo. Okay. Because it, it shuts down your Mox Opal. You need Mox Opal uh, if you are firing off on turn. Uh, oh, turn two or three. That's right, that's you can, right. You can't fire until turn four without yeah. the Mox Opal. Because they're basically Lotus Petals in yeah. that version. Okay, so fair enough. Maybe he does play that card. Yeah, so out of, uh, let's see, out of Cheerios, we are definitely going to see, uh, I think, the Noxus Revival. He needs another another card to um, bring in to set up his combo uh, and to, um, to bring back his creatures after they die. How about silence? Silence is spectacular here. Yeah, silence is exactly what he wants to. Do. He wants to go silence, silence you, on, on five mana, silence uh, or five mana, you're three mana, silence you, play my guy combo. Two. Wow. Ben, ben comboed already. Uh, Anthony is on the play and he plays a tapped um, tap colony. Ben goes for play a bunch of stuff into a shram. It looks like ooh, Ben is on double um, <clears throat> double retract. He was gonna go for it next turn, but there is a path out of Anthony taking down the shram. Finding Ben another land, though. 
all Ben needs to do is find another Shram or Pure Steel Paladin to go off. So it's all down to the draws here. Oh, Did says not, go. Does not find it on his turn two. Manalik, a great draw from Anthony. Oh, yes, yeah, spectacular. <laughs> the slow draw from Ben. So ben finds another um, another zero drop. Draws, finds a shram. He passes back, though. He does not want to run into a counter spell. He's going to try to find uh, one of his answers. Finds a paradoxical outcome. That's good. Yeah. He can find another land. That's he can, a draw three. Uh, he can end step a paradoxical outcome, and then uh, if Anthony counters it, he can untap and shram to start comboing. This does require Ben to find a fourth land, a third land here. <clears throat> Draw him in. He has found a path, though. That is going to be an issue. Yeah, you have to figure game one was either just because Anthony didn't know what Ben was playing. And as a result, kept a hand that wasn't good in the matchup, or... Or he just ran over with the combo. Right, like a turn two. But now that Anthony knows what Ben is on, this crazy combo deck, you gotta figure... Based on the amount of uh, time of match, I think it actually ground out pretty long. Oh, that makes sense. Another thing that Ben probably wants to do is try to uh, get make, make it a four mana with two Shram effects in his hand, so we can try to jam them both out. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. A lot of times against a control deck, it's about constraining their mana. It's about not playing spells into obvious counters and just waiting until one big turn. Yeah. What he really needs to do is find uh, find like a, a a counter spell to defend himself. He needs to find a silence. He needs to go five mana. Find a silence. He essentially just needs to find a silence. Like that's what that's what he needs to have. Right. He needs to go five mana silence to with two guys. Go silence. Guy dies. Guy combo. This is so awkward for Ben. He has no. It's actually not that bad though, because he just get he doesn't have to discard at all, so it's just a stare off of play card pass. This is true, and you have to figure too that if the first game took twenty minutes, maybe this is what happened. Yeah. Anthony not applying pressure right now. So ben still has plenty of time. Not so much time on the clock, but <laughs> technically time. Ooh, you're going to go for a D-Sphere. Wow. Probably on the Mox Opal. <coughs> Anthony probably trying, knows that Ben is um, drawing dead with Lance. He's trying to constrain his mana, or he might be trying to cut off a few of his zeros. Ooh. Ben goes for the retract. Just picks his cards up in response to the target. Wow. I guess you can guess them all. Yeah. How sick would silence be from Anthony? Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ben has found found another land, so that's a, that's another piece of the puzzle that he needed. So now he has to just slam a few zeros onto the table. So he doesn't lose him. Yeah, it's it's actually hard to see how Anthony effectively pressures Ben's life total. Yeah, because his threats are uh, at least at the moment all colonnade based, and he really can't tap low for colonnade. Now he's in a very sticky situation. It's like Ben's like, I'm gonna play these ones. And Anthony says, yes, F6, all those resolve. <laughs> Visions. Right off the top. Dig deeper. It does find some land. There's a crucible. That's hmm. an odd inclusion. Interesting. He does have a ghost quarter. How many basics does Ben have? Uh, ben has... Uh, not many. Wow. Not many at all. Two planes. Okay, so that that's a route to victory for Anthony. Yeah. Ben 
gonna go fetching. <laughs> We're gonna get this. You're the man. <laughs> Note to the chat and all our viewers, our dissension pack was just delivered. Don't worry, we're going to crack a foil breeding pool. It will happen, after this match. Alright, so Ben, Ben's still stuck in zero drop limbo. Ghost quarter in. Now Anthony's already hit his land drop this turn, I, I think. So we can't ghost quarter, ghost quarter. Think he, here. Yeah, I think he played that island. Yeah. A little loose, maybe. And a turn. Paradoxical. So here, here comes the paradoxical. So has to be countered. Yeah, has to be mana leaked here. Make sure that doesn't happen. So then Ben's looking to untap. Find another <laughs> shrimp. He find he has one shrimp. Yeah, alright. Okay, that's going to resolve. Obviously, Trigger. with that on the stack, we're so, pathing. Yep, so he gets to go find a land. Uh, uh, his, his other basic, yep. funny to note. The, the, there is still a trigger from Shram. Shram is, is on cast. Yeah. So Ben will be allowed to draw a card, and he might find another Shram or Prooster Paladin effect off of this. Yeah, I think Ben is close to getting locked out. Ben has one or two main phases left. He definitely has this main phase. Definitely one more. He but found after a that, survival. okay, that's that's not, something. Not great when both of your Shram effects got exiled by paths. You can put the paradoxical outcome back on top of your deck, though. Yep. Oh, we, here we go. Here's a Shram. Another draw. Another path. Okay. Okay. And there are no more basics, which is going to. Alert Anthony so he can start Ghost Quarter. Yeah, absolutely. He can go Tech Edge, your Hallowed Fountain, Ghost Quarter, your Hallowed Fountain, even like Detention Sphere, your Mox Opal. Mm. Oh, there's another land here, though. He didn't so, play land this turn? He had not yet. Okay. Just remember, there's been Path Path. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a Windswept Heath, though, so mm. Anthony should, well, Anthony should know that there's no basic forest in the deck anyway. Yeah. Ooh, that, that's Winthrop Heath is actually... Oh, we can, oh, can fetch a Sacred Foundry. Well, so one more fetchable land. So we, we do have another land for that. So Ben, not going to get put off lands uh, too thoroughly by this uh, Crucible of Worlds. Anthony. Anthony finds another land. It's not great. Yep, there we go. Okay, so Anthony's going, going for your lands. He's going to fight him. All right, get that. Get that. Rewind it back. Rewind. Get it again. Triple strip mine you. Yeah. So Ben has one turn. This basically means Ben has one turn. He has one untap, or else he's, he's going to have yeah. no lands. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, so he, he's going to... He, he has another turn after that, though, because he has potentially three mana sources right now. He's going to lose one. Ooh, he found a Seacomb Ghost. Okay. So he's fine. He's fine. Um, he did an Octus Revival. Uh, I guess because he, he only has three anyway. So we have to save that for a land. Yeah. As awkward as that is. Okay, so he, he goes goes a Ghost Quartering. And the bats back. Draws. It's another land. Another fetch land. Plays it. That's back. Finds a Snapcaster. That's gross. Only Ben had a Doran. <laughs> That's a spicy idea. <laughs> Slide a door in here. Yeah, Mox Opal. That, yeah. That's one mana. What a, what, a good, what good ideas I have. Yeah, <laughs> I'm basically Pat Chapin. <laughs> Found another fetch land. Yeah, dead flooded strand. 
but Anthony does not know that. Not for sure. Yeah, ben is Ben is quickly running out of time on this match. Yeah, it, it almost doesn't... Well, it definitely doesn't matter how Anthony kills him if he has zero mana... You know, no mana production in his deck. At this point, Anthony can just counter any Mox Opals that occur. Yeah, not just not to mention that how many answers are, are stacking up Anthony's hand right. at a certain point is just too much. Okay, there's an Echoing Truth, so gives us a little heads up as to how Ben sideboarded. Sideboarded at least one Echoing. Goes quarter on a fetch land. See our movements. Anthony not really bothering with the proper sequencing right now, mostly because it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he should see your visions before he casts the Ghost Sport from his graveyard. He should Ghost Quarter during his turn and not and you know not during his uh, Ben's end step. But these are pretty minor considerations because Anthony has this game locked up. Yeah, it's it's very. I think it's it's very difficult for uh, for Ben Riley to actually come back from this at this point. Yeah, here's a snap. Do I think it's impossible? No, it's not impossible. But yeah, it could happen. Yeah, it's hard. What is this? Snapcaster? This is. Oh, uh, that's a, that's a Vendelian click. click. Okay, this my bad. Click you. <laughs> like a taxi and probe isn't legal. Ooh, Let's there's go. a there's a pure seal powder in that hand. Interesting. So Ben has three lands left in his deck that produce mana, two Sea Chrome Coast and a Sacred Foundry. Uh, he has three Mox Opals left as well. Yeah, ben needs actual perfect rips for a number of turns. Ooh, ben being a nice guy and uh, holding his hand up for Anthony so he doesn't have to write it down. Hmm. Three. Colonnade waiting for the last four, so as soon as it gets close, Colonnade will peek over. <laughs> He's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. Go for it. Found grape shot and something else. How does Ben beat Chalice of the Void? Uh, he doesn't. Okay. He can retract he, the chalice, he I guess. Echoing truth it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, retract is only artifact you control, isn't it? I think it's target. Oh, yeah, of no, course, of course. Yeah, it wouldn't, it be, wouldn't be, be better Hercules recall. recall. Yeah. Yeah. One, one minute Hercules recall? That seems too good. <laughs> <laughs> A sigil. Make sure he doesn't have to discard. To turn Ghost Quarter. Sounds like okay. Ghost Quarter three. What a game! What a game! I thought lands wasn't legal in this <laughs> format. At some point, these guys have to worry about winning a game three. We're at 14 minutes left here. At some point, someone needs to just win. Yeah. <laughs> Might be a snappy. Cryptic. Oh, bounce draw. Ooh. Ooh, make you discard. He discards his echoing truth. Oh, 
10 billion. Coming in again. Putting you to 7. Plays Tech Edge. Pass the turn. <laughs> End of turn with no mana production in play. Ah, I guess I'll look at my graveyard. Yeah, I'll be fine. I think he's, he's thinking about his Noxious Revival right now. Must be. Yeah. He has to go for it right here. He, he has to go Seachrome, Mox Opal, Pure Steel. I think. Mm. And there has to be no answer out of Anthony. <laughs> Retract, okay. Okay. Yeah, and, and Anthony's seven card hand has to contain nothing, which it contains everything. Right, Mox Opal in the gate. He's got another Mox Opal, though. Did he put that in his graveyard? Yeah, there we go. So the retract resolves. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, I guess it really doesn't do anything. There's no pure steel in play. Oh, There's no oh, SRAM in play. He has. He has the. Um, he has the the gut shot. The grape shot in hand. Is this enough spells? I don't think so. This is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 from Anthony's spell. 15, 16. I think he might be like one short here. Maybe two short. Yeah, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh. So the Mox Oval gets countered. That's that's what Anthony needed to okay. do. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the end of it. Unless Oh, there's there's another Mox Oval! Oh, oh no, and then a gate! Wow. Oh no! Wow! Oh, that's so close. I, I think Anthony just drew that negate off the cryptic too. That's oh, sick. That's wild. So close. Alright, so Anthony tying it up. Ben almost had it with no pure steel. Didn't need anything. Yeah, just, literally had three strand triggers the whole game. Yeah. Just going going for it natural. El natural. Wow. <laughs> that's insane. I mean, I guess Grape Shot's good if you just cast 20 spells naturally in one turn. Uh, yeah. Well, all he had to do was hit 17. That's all he had to do. So now, if, I, if I'm Anthony, I'm going back to my board, and I'm like, God, that, that was actually difficult. Do I want these Stony Silences? Because mm. you're right that Mox Opal is key for him. It's, it is the way to go. Hmm. It's how he has to go. How he gets, he gets his good draws and his good, good go-off turns, his good combo turns. Really, the key for Anthony as well is drawing Geist of St. Traff. He only has one, so it's oh, yeah. it's not a plan that can be relied on, but turn three Geist in this matchup prevents insane pressure. Yeah. Or maybe turn four Geist with a path up. That's the question is, can you, can you reliably cast a turn three Geist without just dying? Yeah, <laughs> it's the truth. You run that risk. Maybe if he, like, button, like, mold to three... <laughs> you can you can you can be like yeah. What's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? Yeah, and he goes he goes uh, pure steel into like play perfect, zero perfect, drop, draw perfect. zero drop, play zero drop, draw zero drop, <laughs> go all the way, and then f find a retract. All right, Anthony, all smiles still. Ten minutes left. These last ten minutes will determine each of these players' tournaments. Do not think I do not think they can uh, afford a draw here. All right, so that's a fetch. Now, if Anthony does not have a one mana interaction spell, it's possible Ben can just just kill him. Yeah. Last la uh, last time I featured Ben, he went off turn two both games. <laughs> that's so improbable. Oh, yeah. All right, turn one, Seer Missions. And this is how Ben tricks people, by the way. In game ones, he goes, oh, Flooded Strand and a Hollowed Fountain, Serum Visions. And the other player just thinks that they're playing some, like, dorky blue-white deck. Yeah, so they just tap out in turn one, yeah. and then they die. <laughs> and then they play a Stram, draw six cards, and set themselves up for the next few turns. Mm -hmm. Oh, Flooded Strand could be anything. Yep. See, like, normally Anthony would have played uh, a Celestial Colonnade there to maximize his land drops, Ooh, but he, bring, he knows. Anthony brings the path to the front because he knows exactly what's happening. <laughs> Basic planes. <laughs> no bones about this. Okay, he's like, ah, you know what's <laughs> happening. All right. 
Trigger. <laughs> Trigger. Put it into exile immediately. <laughs> yeah, basically. He's like, you pathing it? Yeah, bro. Gideon of the Trial is a very interesting card. True. It immediately can get an emblem. And I guess that doesn't matter all that much, because then just Grape Shot just has to be plus three yeah. or plus four or something. Yeah. It needs to be an, an additional plus three or four. Okay, so he draws There's silence. a silence. Which is good. Good card. Negate for Anthony. Another good one. Both players have the tools they need this game. Two. Does not want either of them. Because those cards aren't good. This is a confliction hand and does not does not like it. Just passes over. So Holding up negate again. Go. This game definitely favors Ben with seven and a half minutes left. He can easily win in that amount of time. Anthony? Not so much. Yeah, it's tough. I think he's a very efficient draw where like like he needs to essentially like slam the Gideon now. Yeah. He just needs to get it in there and start pressuring. But he's he's dedicated to not. Yeah, one more land he can because then he has negate. Mm -hmm. okay, so I think Ben needs to play out uh, his another artifact in a Mox Opal in order to try to Paradox Welcome. Or play out just all his zero drops in order to Paradox Welcome and end step. Yeah. Maybe Silence first. Maybe he needs to, do, he needs to uh, get another land. Ooh. Okay, quarter play shield. this, because you need to do that. And then uh, you need to be quiet, sir. Ooh. This is so frightening if you're Anthony. This is terrifying. He has to he has to go for it. He has to at least threaten the extra counter. And so yeah, now 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 Ben's like, yep, okay, we gotta do this. Paradoxical. Yeah. If Anthony has uh, an interaction here, he should just win. Nope. One, two, three. And Riley, start in the chain. <laughs> Slip it across the table. <laughs> okay. so he plays out two, because he can't actually combo here, because he doesn't have a, uh, he didn't have his fourth land, right. unfortunately. Oh, there's uh, this. Found another negate. Ugh, Anthony Ruffello, so lucky. <laughs> All right, play, he, he gets Ruffino. I'm sorry. I can't pronounce words. Uh, but he get, now he gets to play his Gideon out. Zero. Emblem. Yep. And have a negate backup. That's not him. bad. Not bad at all. Oh, Ben draws another silence, Ooh. though. Ooh, that's good. You gotta just let this resolve, of course. It's not It's not like negating this does anything. Yeah. It's like, yeah, okay. Go for it. Do Oof. your thing. Oof. Ben Riley. Can, can Ben do it? All right. You gotta draw. So I've seen Ben whiff before. Yeah, it's possible. There are so many lands in these decks. Goes to fetching. Yep, so it has to be for uh, 22. <clears throat> Three Gideon, 19 at you. Yep. So we are on uh, currently two. around two spells. <laughs> two spells. Three, three. Silence. Oh, yes. No, no, two spells. Silence and uh, the the paladin, right? Uh, and one uh, equipment. That's oh it. yes. You're right. right. Two more mana. Sram. And now. Oh it's wow. Pretty, now it's pretty hard. But, okay. you know, he still has to find more Mox Opals. That's the thing. Yeah, that's true. So but he gets to draw two cards every time. It's so good. I mean, he's out of artifacts. Every draw two has to hit an artifact. Oh, no, he has one more. Okay. That might be a whiff right there. He that's... can uh, suit up his guys, though. Yeah, he can. Makes him pretty big. <laughs> This is, the, think, this is the most fun part of this deck, for yeah. sure. I don't think any of these give them haste, unfortunately. No. Nope. They would be able to uh, take out this Gideon. Ben looks at his hand, figures out what he needs to discard. Yep, so that's a whiff right there. Now, I think he has another Silence and a Paradoxical. So while it's a whiff, I mean... Yeah, he can still go off next turn. There are no... As, yeah. as long as nothing nuts happens here, especially with two in play. Anthony would be required to here answer both. There's the Geist way too late. Yeah. How sick would Meddling Mage be right here? Meddling oh, Mage no. Crank Shot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like Nevermore Crank Shot. <laughs> oh, God. 
that new uh, Gideon's intervention. Yeah, grape yeah. Shot. <laughs> I have protection from grape shot. <laughs> Hey, land drop. Back edge. One, two, three mana. I like blue colors. We're going to see the Crucible come down. It isn't going to do much here. No, nope, not really. Threatens tech edges, I suppose. And if Anthony can deal with the Sacred Foundry in all four Mox Opals, then he shuts Ben out. But that's, that's a pipe dream at this point in the game. All right, so we got uh, one. Silence. And we have another pure steel paladin. Oh, man. Wow, draw three. Draw three. There's no way Ben doesn't go off here. This is very unlikely to whiff. He can even echoing truth his own, you know, whatever he has most of. Yeah. Kite sail. Yep. Pick up all three. That represents nine cards. Yep. Yeah, so that's three spells. Four spells. Yeah. I don't think we actually have to count. I think it's just going to be enough. Well, it's it's interesting, right? Because I forget which one's which, but one of them is May and one of them is not May. Yeah. So it is possible for this deck to deplete their own library. Mm. Like if he had all eight in play, he would he would deck himself. He's already getting pretty. Th yeah. See. Okay. Oh yeah. So yeah. He's so the shram, the, sh the shram is the may is the must. Yes, it looks like it. Okay. There were there were a couple mock syllables in play for a second. Not a huge deal. Yeah. One was tapped, so it didn't matter. He picks up all his stuff. Draws one. You see him just drawing one. But if his if his uh, hand configuration was that. He didn't have the pure steals. Eh, he might deck himself. Yeah, if it was multiple shrams, that would be a problem for Ben. Yeah, legend. So that's that won't happen. It's okay. I almost said the same thing. <laughs> okay. So equi <laughs> equip, make a mana. Look at this. Look at this. Mana. Look at this technology. He's like, yeah, that's enough. Maybe. Oh, we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> just make sure. Ben Riley locking this one up. He just has to finish the motions correctly, not target himself with Grape Shot. <laughs> not, not send all of the Grape Shots at, at Anthony. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I wonder if he's just going to draw his entire deck. Four. Oh, yep, yep. He targets correctly. Four there. The rest at you. Nice. There we nice. go. And Ben Riley is on to top eight. Woo! Woo. Cheerios makes it through with 20 seconds left on the clock. Congratulations, Ben. Good job, Ben. After coming close and coming close and coming close and, you know, making top eight and losing in top eight, he's done it again. Ben is in there. He, huh. he is in, in, on to top eight of the plus event. Yeah. Ben, another one of our regulars, another one of our stalwarts. He comes to every event. He oh. plays Cheerios at every event. And it seems like his deck list doesn't change ever. No. Pretty much never. I guess today he added Collective Brutality and one Godless Shrine on the sideboard. That's about the extent of the change. So if you're just joining us after that match, uh, that was that was the last match. That was round 8 of 8. That was it. Um, we have top 8, of course, but that's going to be played tomorrow. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to be announcing the top 8. We're going to be telling you what archetypes they're on, things like that. More importantly... The dissension pack. We're gonna open a breeding tool, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah, let it, let it, let it breathe a little, let it breathe a little. We want to show. You have to, you have to aerate it. You have to yeah, give it a little bit of. To, ooh, ooh, yeah. I gotta give them the good, give them the good, the slap. Yeah. Open up. Ooh, I love it. So Ben Riley definitely in top. Anthony Rafino, another near miss, man. I do feel bad for Anthony a little bit because he came really close at an open, like a 300 person open. His breakers just weren't good enough. This one. He can't draw in. He has the, the right record, but he just can't draw in. Yeah. It's but, too bad. I mean, he'll be back, and he'll do well again. I'm He's sure. a consistent player. You know. Blue-white. 
you you take you take your wins, you take your losses, and you just you keep playing. Yeah. You know? Six and two. I mean, if I told you at the beginning of the day you're going to go six and two, you'd be like, all right, I can deal with that. It sucks to lose the last round. Yeah. He still gets his money back plus. Yeah, I think yeah. double double your money. I forget the exact payout, but he's going to get some good stuff. He can get some stuff off the prize wall if he wants. Mm-hmm. Although once once we open the only good thing in the pack, the breeding pool, not much point to really <laughs> open it anymore from that box. It's going to be so embarrassing when it's like a... Like a bronze bombshell, just some like terrible rare. I had to go like really deep into the files there to get to get bronze (laughs) bombshell. I wasn't even playing during dissension. I was like, when was that? Was that 2005? 2005, 2006, 2005. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I was like, you were almost playing, right? No, no, I I didn't start playing till five years ago. Man. Yeah. How do you know these old cards then? Were you just patronizing me with bronze bombshell? Do you even know what bronze bombshell is? Oh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. <laughs> How about this? What what kind of card is it? An artifact. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna be a terrible artifact. Yeah. It like when your opponent gains control of it, it explodes and they take damage. So you're supposed to like donate it to your opponent or something. How much? I think it's like seven damage. That's pretty good. Like, not even a ton of damage. Were there any effects that transferred control of two permits? Like you get theirs, they get yours. I don't. I don't there were, think there so. Were some, there could be some sweet limited combos there. Yeah. It was that was a weird card. It, it was like. A crow is like a shade of a crow and horse. A crow and horse in an alternate universe. Uh, but I, I drafted a lot of that format, so I remember all those crap rares. Um, thanks for watching us, guys. I mean, all day, right? Like all day. We, we had some uh, some of the same viewers stuck with us all day, and I thank you for it. Um, I don't think we can take credit. I think modern. It's all it's, it's takes modern. the credit. Yeah. Like yeah, you could have been watching the standard pro tour. Yeah, you could have been watching replays of Standard, or you could be playing, watching the best format. Yes. Modern. Yes. The only format we're getting into the trials is a bomb. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's okay in limited. It's okay, yeah. It's it's beatable. It's more beatable in limited than it is in modern, strangely enough. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Gideon, like, loses to a couple flyers. But when backed up by Supreme Verdict? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nuke the board. 4-4. Four, four. Attack. Um, so I'm happy everyone came out to the t- to the DCU Center, too, uh, in Worcester. That's pretty cool. Everyone wanted a piece of Tom Shea's money, which is understandable. They also wanted the qualification to the Titanium Finals, um, which you have. Yeah. I do. I, do. I keep bringing it up. Can you tell you, I'm jealous? Uh, yes. A little <laughs> bit jealous. You know what, man? All you gotta do is just win. Oh, that's it's that Oh, easy. you just have to win an eighty-person magic tournament. Yeah, that's difficult, man. No, it isn't. Have you ever won an eighty-person magic tournament? Plenty of them. Okay. Well, and larger. Wow. Yeah, Are you bragging? Uh, yeah. You want you want me to list off my qualifications? I I, I, I have them all memorized. All right, game <laughs> game day winner. Uh, five game days, sir. Five whole game days. Play mats that I earned myself. I got the Ugin mat. I was like ecstatic over that one. Do you use those mats? Um. Uh, only the Ugin one. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, no, okay, that's not true. I For like a month, I, I used the Ammonic at Game Day mat, just, you know, for the meme of it. Yeah. No, that's understandable. I would use them too if I could earn them. <laughs> Haven't yet. You can win Game Days? So easy. Haven't been to Game Days. Go win a Game Day. Everybody at home, just go to a Game Day and win it. It's easy. Okay, we're, so top eight announcement is being made right now. Um, as soon as we know for sure, we will tell you. Cool. Nice. It is a clean cut. Uh, we have in first place with 22 points, uh, Richard and Samuel. Second place with 21 points, uh, Ben Riley. Third place, uh, Thomas Smiley with 21. Uh, Sam Lawrence with 20. Uh, Brandon Smith with 20. And then we have uh, Keenan Kel- Kelly with 19, uh, Matthew Borst with 19, wow. and Stephen Malone. Nice. Coming in. So what's that? Three blue white control decks? Am I mistaken here? Is that three blue? Is it finally blue white's time to shine? Oh man. Very nice. So it was a clean cut. Uh, ninth place, Jordan Dion 
Sorry, buddy. We didn't get you on camera. Sorry good for the good nine. Old Dan, Dan Payne coming in at 10. Yeah, April winner. Good, good on you, Dan. Yeah. I think he was playing Burn just like he was playing uh, at the one he won, at the March Challenge that he won. Mm. Let's see. Coming in at 16 with 18 was uh, Thien Nguyen. Yeah, the Storm player. Yep. And now, no, I'm very interested. Okay, so so some other notables. <laughs> nice. Uh, Nicolaine coming in, in at 20th, uh, regular of the circuit. And uh, Matt Tupper. Master of uh, Master of Tooth and Nail coming in at 21st, still in top 30. That's respectable, man. That's, that's, res respectable. that's respectable. At this, uh, a tournament this size, you can go and brag to your store. Oh yeah. Like yeah, I was playing for top eight at the end. I mulled the five and had like a cube hand, and it was terrible. He had, but... he had two two matches on camera. He can, he'll be able to go yeah, back and watch it again. Yeah, like, exactly. We'll probably, we'll probably stream him at oh, at an FNM. I'll we'll just I'll just put it on. And I'll be like, hey, everybody, watch watch Tupper lose. <laughs> but you're, I mean, you're going to have to, like, go to that store, and he's going to be like, bro, why'd you make fun of me? And then you're going to have to answer him. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll, I'll, I'll use a lot of, of language that I can't use on stream. Oh, okay. I, okay. I, lo I love Tupper. We're, we're bros. So we can, we can joke. Yeah, you can, you can make fun of each other. Yeah. <laughs> right, so Sam Richardson, Blue White, Ben Riley, Cheerios, Thomas Smiley, The Zoo Deck. The Zoos. Sam Lawrence, the oh, are, I mean we're forgetting about this. The Felidar Sahili Ras Felidar Guardian is in top. Yeah, eight. went six oh two with the Cheerios top eight. with yeah. a bunch of blue white control. That's this true. is a crazy top eight. So that's the Rye deck. Brandon Smith still in the dark. We're gonna get you Brandon Smith's deck list as soon as we can. Keenan Kelly blue white. Same with Matt Borst. We need to get his deck list. A few players. That's that's kind of how top eights work. Is it's a few people just kind of slip under the radar. You it's know about true. most of them. It's true. Coverage, but some of them just like. You don't know until the last second. We have at least, so we know six out of the eight archetypes right now. One, two, four of the six have Hollowed Fountain as, as, their, as their main land, you know. So blue-white is highly represented here. You'd think a collected company deck would have smashed this tournament. Nobody's playing it today. Yeah, maybe, maybe the two that we don't know. Brandon Smith, Matthew Borst. Ooh, that would be really good matchups for them. And then, they, and then they face Ben Riley in the finals. Yeah, right, and <laughs> just can't win. Yeah, it's just like... Whoops. Uh, person who's won the most games, Sam Richardson, obviously. Uh, Sam Lawrence snuck in only winning 60% of his games. You go 602, you only win 60% of your games. That's hard to do. <laughs> At this point, Dylan, I think there's only like one thing left to do. Yeah. I'll you do. know, I'll give you the honors. It's time. I'll send you back. So, chat. What do you what do you think it's gonna be? Uh, I mean, I, I already said, but I think it's gonna be a foil breeding pool. And I said what I think it's gonna be a non foil blood crypt. Okay. So I'll give the chat maybe a maybe a minute minute yeah, to place place their predictions. Yeah, place your bets. What's uh, in back? Imagine in your mind right now the Jeopardy theme music playing. That was beautiful. I'm very good at, at um, <laughs> like old game show theme music. That was really beautiful. Boom, boom, <laughs> I'm going to rewatch that every day. <laughs> <laughs> Just that section, and then me opening the breeding pool. I think so. I, I need like I need a little um, a little device that has like three buttons on it. One device plays the um, the, the Jeopardy theme song. Okay. One plays the um, the the lose sound from Price Is Right. Yep. And one plays the Curb Your Appetite, uh, Curb Your Ambitions, <laughs> the, the dum bum bum. Ba -da 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 -da. I, I just need it. it. I need that so I can just walk up to people when I see things in games and just press the right the equivalent it. button. <laughs> You're gonna get kicked out of any store that'll have you. I tell you. I've done it with my phone, like quickly searching up the YouTube videos, and it's funny every time. Nice. <laughs> well, you think it's funny. They think it's funny too. Okay. I get a laugh every time. Okay. I, I have never never gotten a, a disdainful stare before. See, I think I think the reason we're not getting predictions in the chat right now is because no one knows dissension rares. <laughs> That's the real problem. There's like they're like, all right, the three dual lands, uh, 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 pride of the clouds, uh, 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 <laughs> protein hulk. Oh, protein hulk in there. Um, oh, we could rip a froil protein hulk. That'd be pretty cool. But that's about it. So, chat, I don't blame you. You're like pretty anemic today, but I don't blame you for not having recommendations. So let's open it, man. Yeah, let's do it. Factory sealed, you know. Factory sealed. Okay, we, we're not cheating it. No tampering. 
None. This is from the TJ's prize wall. This could have been yours if you had just come to play in the tournament. I just hope for a spell, a spell snare, to be honest. Yeah, me too. Oh, red, red black land. See that? Reactus Carnarium. Side shape spawner, helium squirter. Uh, I, should, I should do this so the stream can see. Seal of Fire. Oh, Pumps up Tarmogoyf. All right, let's get to the interesting. Oh, let's, let's go to the good stuff. All right, we got a Plaxcaster Frogling. Ooh, 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 the number good. of cards in the pack, no foil, so I'm already wrong. Darn. Stoic Ephemera. Sp spell Snare. A spell Snare. Pa pack was worth it. Right. Ready, we'll, let, we'll let the stream see first right, before right. we do. Pull it. Oh, oh that can't be good. Oh, that can't no. be good. What is this? Oh, it's some... Oh, oh. bound and... Bound and determined. <laughs> bound and determined. Tom Shea, what's up with the prize wall? We get, we get bound and determined <laughs> hey, in our booster packs. Hey, you packs. can't complain. We got a spell, <laughs> got a spell, got a spell snare. snare. I paid for my booster pack. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for my booster pack. I love it. Oh, boy. So, yeah, who, uh, Dylan, who do we have here? Uh, this man right here? Top, top eight competitor? I mean, no, uh, no. No, no, no. There's always the next one. Matt, um, Telly. Wait. Oh, yeah, I need to keep a couch that I'm actually Caleb. Yeah, this is Caleb McVeigh. So, everyone on stream? Okay. We're going to be getting our, our last two deck lists, Brandon Smith and Matthew Borst, so we can at least confirm what they're playing, so you know, so we can break down the bracket for you for tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. um, and we can let you know which match we're going to feature, or maybe a, at least a, a hopeful of which match we're going to feature. Uh, as it breaks down right now, the one seed will be playing the eight seed, blue-white control, ver uh, Sam Richardson. We saw him on stream. He won February's challenge, if you remember. He's playing Steve Mullahu. <laughs> I got a root for a man named Mullahu. <laughs> He's playing Jess Guy Queller. They're going to play against the 4 5, Sam Lawrence, who's playing Sahili Rai. Four color Sahili Rai. Four color Sahili Rai. Splash for Lingering Souls. And uh, Fatal Push. Fatal Push. Yeah, that's Some a good other spectacular card. black cards. We don't know the 5 5. Slipped in there. I, I mean, I don't know what he's playing against, but I want to see that match. I want to see that deck again. Um, so Tom Smiley playing Zoo. That's Death Shadow Zoo. He's playing against the six seed Keenan Kelly, who we failed to feature today. I'm sure he'll get his chance tomorrow. Blue White Control. So Blue White, hey, you see this Blue White opposite sides of the bracket? If there's a blue-white mirror, I'm just going to walk away from the commentary table. Oh, oh, that, <laughs> I'm completing. That's you, my stomping you, ground. You, you get to sit, sit here and just watch that. Oh, I would love it. <laughs> I would love it, man. <laughs> Rounding out the bracket, Cheerios, Ben Riley, versus the other unknown deck, Matt Borse, which we're also going to get from you. So, what's possible here is two blue-white in the finals. What's also possible here... As something as goofy as Death Shadow Zoo with Tribal Flames for Sahili Rai combo in the finals. That would be awesome. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's, what I'm, that's what I'm banking on. Depending on what these two decks are, yeah. that's what I'm banking All on. Right. Oh, wait, no, no, right. I'm sorry. Ben needs to win this event. Cheerios. I want Ben to win this event. I, I like Ben a lot. Ben has been grinding for a very long time. Yeah. That's my pick. It's true. Um, pretty cool. I know. Now, we actually have the, the thing that we theorize might happen when we started this series, where Sam Richardson, uh, being someone who already has a qualification, would win the event, and the slot would pass to second place. Which, uh... Well, to third place. To, to third place. Oh, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. So, so he would get the bye, then there would be qualification, qualification. Exactly. So second place and third place. And here we go. We have the Excellent. deck list. Yep. So we're we looking for Matt list. Borst and Brandon Smith. All right, we have... Sam. Brandon Smith. All right. Oh, Brandon Smith. Forced. Here we go. Found it. Brandon Smith. Delver of Secrets. Grixis Del Delver. What? Yeah. He, he's not playing Street Raid. He's not trying to damage himself. That's wild. He's trying to Delver Young Pyromancer. Delver made top eight. Now, That's crazy. Yeah. Still with Gourmet Angler. Still with Tassigar. But Delver of Secrets. And over here uh, on this side, we have Primeval Titan. And scape shift in the same deck. Okay, I Red, like that. Red green Valka Titan. I like that. You know, it's it's pedestrian compared to this stuff. It's it is still a pretty darn good deck. Yeah, it's good to round it see out. See if there's anything spicy in here. Um, see, we have like a slot of games out of the board. 
Um, P and Kieran Alar on the board. I appreciate that as a man who knows a thing or two about P and Kieran Alar. Hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, Our promise. That's a ramp card. Mm, wow. Yeah. A that gets two Valakits, actually. That's sweet. It does. Wow, it does. That's so good. Uh, we got Torch Ashandra in the main yep. board. Um, a lot of the rest is, is just pretty pretty common stuff. Colony Arc Expedition Explorers. Yep. You know, now, so. you might think that he's drawing dead against Ben Riley's Cheerios, but I'm looking at the sideboard. Three slaughter games. Name Grape Shot. That's, straight up win. Pretty good. Straight up win. He would need to. He needs to side in his Laboratory Maniac to win. Oh, that's true. He plays the Lab Maniac. So he yeah. Plays an alternate win condition, yeah. like most good combo decks do. Now, for those of you asking in the chat, we are starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. That's Eastern Standard Time. So if you're on the West Coast, stay up all night. Yeah. Who, who needs sleep anyway, right? Not me. I got Red Bull. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got coffee, but it, it makes me go blind. Seriously. I get, uh, it's a hereditary thing. I go get ocular migraines. If you drink coffee? If I drink too much caffeine, I will go blind in my right eye. Holy cannoli. Yeah. And, and part of my left eye. Okay. It's crazy. But yeah. bad jeans. What can I say? Yeah, no, I'm right there with you. I mean, look at, uh, like, we need an umbrella for my head. <laughs> look at this. <laughs> Talk about bad jeans. Shiny man. <laughs> you, you, you did this, and then you could see your head again, and it, and it went away. <laughs> look, it, it's just a personal problem. It's something I got to deal with. No big deal. So well. But yeah, this top eight, excellent top eight. It, it has a lot of a lot of patterns to it in the number of blue white decks throughout throughout. But there's a lot of a lot of outliers, a lot of unique stuff. Yeah, and this this is just like a snapshot of the metagame. It, well, the local metagame in the Northeast, right? Yeah. Zero collected company decks in the top eight. Not because it's bad, because it's so underrepresented in yeah. this area. At least right now. Yeah, at least right now. It, I think after after people see this tournament, we're gonna see a lot more collected companies. Yeah, you know, I'd hope so. I, I said that about the two Titanium events ago. There was like one collected company deck in the whole room. And I'm like, wow, this is. This is. I actually wrote an article that probably twenty people read, but hey, it's out there if you want to look it up. I wrote My it. My article I'm going up soon. There we go. I said that this is amazing for blue white control right now because of the complete lack of collected companies. And hey, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but oh yeah, I am. Yeah, let me help you with yeah that. I am. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, but again, there's a reason I'm here and not out there because I punt every match I play. So hey. Um, so do you want to decide right right now which match we're going to feature, or do you want to leave it a surprise? Um, I want to see the Cecilia Rye versus Grixis, I think. That that matchup is going to be sweet. I think so, too. Yeah, because uh, we haven't seen Delver on camera at all. I barely ever see Delver in Modern anymore. Because it's just not... You wouldn't think it's actually that good without right. a way to right. uh, successfully like manipulate the top of your deck at instant speed, like on your, your turn two. Um, it can still just naturally flip. See, that's the thing about, about Delver. It is a deck for the lucky in modern. Because you can play a Delver on turn one and always flip your Delver on yeah, turn yeah, two. Yeah, yeah, it's the best deck yeah. in modern. That's how you win a GP, boys. That's <laughs> right there. I love it. This this is good, too, because it's like the Grixis Shadow, or rather the Grixis Shadow deck has to get itself so low and is so vulnerable to, like, a burn deck. Yeah. Something like that. But the Delver deck can actually play the strategy where it keeps itself at 20 life, fetches its basics. Yeah. Brutality still completely yeah, available to it. Yeah, can actually play that card. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the Death Shadow decks still play Brutality. They don't, they don't care. They, they, just, they just like to make my life miserable. So that's that's what we're going to start out with at 9 a.m. Um, Eastern Time. Please join us. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't promise we're going to open another Dissension pack, but we might. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, maybe I'll, I'll choose the pack this oh, time. Oh, there we Something go. my past. There we go. Uh, we're going to Open be... an original Innistrad pack. Ooh. What do you yeah. want there? Um, it's got to be Snap. Coil snap. Coil snap. Coil snap. Coil snap. Coil snap. Coil snap. Nice. Yeah. yeah, we're going to be starting out uh, Sam Lawrence versus Brandon Smith at 9 a.m. That's four color Sahila Rai combo deck versus Grixis Delver. Like basically off the wall, yeah. like wacky draft style magic. I love it. It's going to um, be great. And then we get to find out uh, what, is pow what is truly powerful. Is it the interesting decks or is it just the consistent? <laughs> Blue white it's control. True. It's here's true. my cards. Here's my Gideon. At least one of these blue white decks is going to make it in the final. Hopefully both, unless they get unlucky both. Um, also going on tomorrow, if you're in the Northeast area and you want to come, just hang out, watch the top eight. We have two PPTQs uh, sponsored by X9 Games, if I'm remembering this correctly, out in Amherst, uh, my way. Um, the PTQs start at 
9 a.m., Jeff? Right. I believe they're Start. stifled. I believe one one starts and then an, another one starts later on. Yeah, it's like they're three hours apart. Check our website if you do want to come out. Yep. It's all in, the, fa- in the, uh, the Facebook event page. Yeah. It's on, on the website. It's all, all that information is available there. Yeah. Um, there's also going to be a legacy 2.5K. So exactly. if you are a, a lover... Of the um, a lover of the lion's eye diamonds. Oh yeah, play that. Oh yeah, Eric Dupuy uh, going to be joining us doing some commentary there, which is pretty cool. A legacy expert. He's probably going to tell me why I'm wrong about everything in the format. I will disappear off to the sidelines. No, no, we'll get you in here. I'll for be sure. We'll somewhere. get you in here. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm going to be I'm going to like welcome being told that I'm wrong because. Yeah, I used to play a lot of Legacy. Past couple of years, I haven't played that much. Mm. So it's going to be pretty exciting to hear like everything that I'm doing wrong and think wrong about the format. We're going to see some Sensei's Divining Topless Legacy action. It's pretty wild. Which is really cool. With a big chunk of change to first place, which is cool. Uh, so tune in for that. Come by uh, if you want to like do any. I mean, you could do side drafts. You can do side standard events, minor events, whatever. Trade. We have three vendors here. We have gaming, etc. Moose Loot and Flipside Gaming. Thank you to them for sponsoring our tournament. Mm. Thank you for them to bring all these modern cards that everyone bought. Of course, we have Flip and TJs. They're going to be at every event. Oh, yeah. Uh, but until then, guys, please turn tune in at 9 a.m. Uh, to watch us talk about modern. Talk about modern. Yeah. At 9 a.m., we're going to have Brandon Smith versus Sam Lawrence and the rest of the top eight, too. We'll be giving out two invitations as well as watching some Legacy. So we hope you join us then. Until then, see y'all later. See ya. Uh, it's catching on, spreading seas as an island. Yep, that's that's how you do it. That's end of turn, spell yeah, well. End of turn. Just well or end. Oh no! Wait. Oh, that's okay. No, no, no. that's that's a, a, that's that's a guy. That's too. a guys because. They're, the creatures have flash because of oh man <laughs> I forget Rattle Chains does so many things that's spicy man it has flash it gives another guy hexproof it gives your other spirits flash look at the the power right now smash you for eight. Oh, that's a sad angel token no oh. Oh. <laughs> how nice Sam having an uh, angel token because he plays uh, a Geist in his sideboard. Nice. The Kraken, Sam on three life. is basically... Uh, so he needs to go Verdict here. Yeah, but... But the Verdict look. gets eaten by a... Um, eaten by a Spellcaller. Yeah, or a Selfless Spirit. This is just... Uh, this is a blowout. He's like, nah, Whoa. brah. Nah, brah. Nah, unless there's a Spell Snare here. Doesn't look like there is. Click. He's like, I'll take that back because yeah. I'm dead. So yeah, he, ha- he has a path for. Oh no, but he's yeah, he's he's dead to the. Uh, he's dead on board, so it didn't matter. Mm. Spirits getting in. I'm glad that tempo decks are viable again in modern. There was a period where tempo decks weren't very good, but you see you see things like Bant spirits, you see things like Merfolk uh, permeating tables recently. Yeah, these decks are solidly tier two. I mean, they're 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 not. Um, I would say Merfolk is tier one point five. It's always been tier one point five. It's always just been like that deck that's just floating floating just under the radar of being being too good, but having just incredible draws sometimes. Incredible matchups too, right? Oh yeah, it can beat pretty much anything in the format. Yeah, Band Spirits has has a few a few real uh, real proponents. I mean, I know. Uh, Local guy Joe Horton Sr. Uh, always plays Bant Spirits. That's been his deck for a long time. His son Joe Jr. on Burn usually. Dad on Bant Spirits. Uh, cool father and son combo. They come to almost every TJ's to, me, TJ's event together. Mm. Um, nice to see. If I tried to teach my dad how to play Magic, his head would explode. Same. I, I, he I, might have a brain aneurysm. Yeah, it's just too much. It's yeah. just too much for some people. I told him about Mana Screw, though, and that stuck. Whenever I tell him I'm going to a tournament, he's like, okay, don't get Mana Screw. <laughs> All right, it's, Dad. It's really interesting, like, how what things stick with your parents yeah. that you tell them, you know? Another, uh... I, 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 uh, I messaged my uh, my mother 
uh, the the link to the event page. And I was like, oh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of a, a magic celebrity now. Uh, tune in, and she's like, no, <laughs> he's no served me. Probably, probably just gave you an eye roll emoji. <laughs> <laughs> um, another father and son combo Sam and his dad Dan they both play uh, I played with Dan something like 10 years ago vintage player in western mass Amherst area uh, his Sam his son his Sam's son his son Sam took son, a break for magic Sam. the son of <laughs> the son of Dan uh, took a pretty long break you know for college and high school he had better things to do can't blame him but he's back now um, and he's you can, like yeah you can never escape you say you're gonna quit, but you can't. No, you don't. You don't quit the best game on the planet. Like, there's just no reason to quit the best game on the planet. That's not how that works. Yeah. Here we go. Jig draws. What's he got? I see a wanderer. I see some some magic cards. I don't know what they are right now. Oh, you know, what would be. I just thought of a a, a a band spirits line that's possible. It's pretty sick. Is to go pass the turn with this board state, and then go. Flash in my uh, rattle chains. Flash in my maelstrom wanderer. Counter your thing with the maelstrom wanderer. Nice, Ooh. nice. That's spicy. <laughs> All your sp- that's the thing about about uh, design recently is that a, lo- a lot of creatures are just spells. They've just printed creatures, spells in creature form. Yeah, well, you have to, right? I mean, creatures inherit downside. They have summoning sickness. Spells don't. It's like it just kind of had to happen. And a lot of people complain that creatures are too good now. That. It's uh, back in my day, spells were good, but whatever. Creatures were just so terrible back in the day. I mean, look at Morphling. Morphling was one of the best creatures of all time. That would be laughed at if it was printed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would. Ooh. Chat chat throwing some fire at Merfolk. Yeah, well, I haven't read it, but I'm sure I agree with whatever they said. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, Merfolk's a great deck, y'all. Yeah, no, 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 no. Aether Vial is a great card. Let's say that. <laughs> okay. Aether Vial is a spectacular card. Lord of Atlantis is a good card. That that card is pretty good. Master. Island Walk is nice. Yeah. yeah. Master of Waves used to be unkillable. That, that card used to be just straight, straight fire. But then Fatal Push got printed. It's a little worse now. So, Mausoleum Wanderer resolves. Now, Selfless Spirit will draw the Mana Leak. <laughs> Attempt to draw the Mana Leak anyway. It, it might get Mal- uh, Mausoleum Wanderer. Excellent sequencing from Jacob here, knowing to uh, to play play the, guy, the the creature that can be a spell, uh, a force spike first. These players, 4 0, trying to move on to 5 0. 5 puts him in a great position to top 8. You can only go 1-1 one, one the last two rounds. Attacking the last two rounds. There we go. There's the leak. There's the sack. Yeah, this does not seem like a great matchup for, for Sam here. There's just so much... To Jacob's deck, like like the combination of being able to play things at instant speed and uh, like have things like selfless spirit and spell quell or a geist, it's just oh, it's gonna it's gonna let it sit sit under there. It doesn't have any graveyard interaction, I don't think. So it doesn't matter where it sits. Yeah, he does have some Kasali Pride Mage in his board. Whether or not he sided them in to kill the D spheres, we'll see. But he does have that option, so definitely no reason not to have it under the sphere. Uh, oh. The tournament is eight rounds. Yep. For the chat. <laughs> Supreme Verdict might get quelled here. I would quell this. I mean, why leave up three mana and not attack for two with your Hierarch if you're not going to spell quell it here? Yeah. Takes one, quells that spell. Queller that speller. So now he gets to attack for four with this spell quell. Yeah, pretty good. And a pass. Uh, the non-crack of Horizon Canopy kind of representing an instant here. If Jacob had no gas, he'd crack the canopy going to search. 
if I'm saying I'm, I'm taking that into account and I'm making my plays, it's just a minor consideration, but you got to think about that. Colony tapped pass. Ooh. Interesting. So he goes untap draw, attack immediately. Or, oh no, this is, oh wait, we're still in step. He's going to go, go for the crack. And Sam is going, it looks like Sam's going to respond. Looks like a cryptic. Which could get, ooh, is there another spell color in his hand? That would be saucy. Get all the four mana spells with your spell colors. Yeah. Maximum value. Spellcaller, one of my favorite cards that's been printed recently. It is really good. It was incredibly annoying in Standard when the Blue-White Spirits deck was around, but it is, it's it's mellowed out. It's not a humongous pain in the butt anymore. It's very fair, too. The gameplay patterns are just really good with it. Like, you counter one spell, and then they use a removal spell trying to kill it, and then you cast another Spellcaller, and it's like uh, a Tower of Jenga blocks. It's like... Every every spell queller you cast, the removal spell that finally resolves is just brutal. But until then, it's really good. Yeah. Okay, so we have Cryptic. Um, was that a path? Oh boy. So this there's there's some interesting blow up potential here. Where if he goes Cryptic and then there's a spell queller, uh, and then he goes Path on the spell queller with a, a Wrath under it, it could get real crazy real fast. I really, really like Sam's play here. Instead of just throwing his cards willy-nilly, he's using his life total as a resource, and he's going to cast all of his cards oh, no. at once here. We go... Constrain Jake's mana. This is perfect play from Sam. I like it a lot. Because now Jake might have two counters in his hand, but he only has enough mana to cast one of them. So this is going to be a blowout. It's going to be a blowout turn. It's going to go path. And there's going to be a Spell Queller into a Cryptic. Potentially. If Jacob wants to fight over this, that is. Jacob probably should have tapped his Noble Hierarchs here for this uh, Steal the God Hand. At least one of them, yeah. Yeah. Because now he's put in a very... A very poor position on the next turn if because if he lets this uh, this resolve then he is he is only on one man next turn he can do basically nothing though I don't think much is gonna happen on Sam's turn anyway so it's not like he's gonna get punished too much but wow he lets it resolve I think it's I think that's right because I think he he is reading uh, another answer out of Sam so he would rather not get his second queller blown out. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, I think I think a lot of players would just sit, slam the, spec the second queller there. I think that... Uh, it, it shows a lot of uh, a lot of forethought from Jacob. Yeah. Even though Jacob maybe has messed up once or twice this game, uh, or at least not messed up, but has been forced into this particular position by Sam, he realizes that he has to play it slow. Even though he doesn't want to play it slow, he has to. He plays accordingly. I like it. He floats two mana, and post-combat he's going to try and resolve something. Hopefully for him a Geist. Geist would be the best possible here. This is, it has it is to be a Geist, cryptic. but it will be cryptic. There's no, yeah, there's no way he lets this resolve. Counter draw with a Sphinx is red with the ready. Yeah, that's nice. That's oof, brutal. So the draw off, off of uh, the cryptic was a Serum Visions. There is a Jace drawn this turn. Just value, value, value. So he's just gonna dig, keep digging. So hits a land, perfect. Probably just gonna cast the Jace here. Nice play again from Sam. Doesn't. Oh, no, okay. I was gonna say, does reveal he has a land before he factor fictions, but he's plussing Jace instead. Mm. Very reasonable. Decision says go. Thought about the tech edge for a second there, but realized it was kind of irrelevant. He would rather just keep building mana for uh, his eventual rev. Nice. Tapping, tapping three. Looks like he's gonna 